Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So climate change activism is all the rage. At the September 20th strikes for climate change, about 4 million people in 150 countries went on strike for climate change action. Also, the United Nations General Assembly Climate Summit took place on September 23rd in New York, where world leaders came together to discuss the predicament of the planet and just what we should all do about it. As I am sure you all know, the climate strikes were inspired by 16-year-old climate activist the Swedish Greta Thunberg and her school strike for climate change. She also spoke at the UN Climate Summit, delivering an impassioned speech which had her holding back what looked like tears of anger. She was even filmed giving Donald Trump a filthy look when he turned up at the summit. I don't think he saw it though, and if he did, I don't think he'd care. Now, on the surface, this activism seems all well and good. I mean, it's common sense to want to protect the environment. And what better than people exercising their right to free speech by gathering in peaceful protest for a cause that matters to them? I am all for all of that. However, despite their presentation as the enlightened class who are willing to sacrifice life and limb to save the world, climate change activists, or more to the point, climate change alarmists, often have a sinister ulterior motive or total lack of empathy or both, which they hide under the mantle of working for the common good. See, many of these activists are actually extremists who are violently opposed to considering anyone else's views and will go to any lengths to implement what they believe is the correct way of doing things. There is a very Machiavellian streak to them that is often ignored by the media, which is not surprising since the mainstream media is full of climate change alarmists posing as journalists. So, having observed the past six months or so of climate change activists from Prince Harry and Meghan Markle to Greta Thunberg to the Extinction Rebellion protesters in Brisbane, Australia who lay on their backs and glued their hands to the middle of the road in the middle of the city to protest the Adani coal mine, I have decided to sit down and take stock of this group of people who are becoming increasingly, dare I say it, radicalized. Now, to be very, very clear, this video is not about my opinion on climate change or whether or not climate change exists. I am not a denier and I am not a skeptic. I am simply a climate centrist who is interested in and willing to listen to all sides of the argument so we can come to the best possible solution. I'm not pushing any kind of agenda here. All I want to do is highlight the fact that many of those who claim to be acting in good faith and purely for the good of the planet are in actual fact doing no such thing. I don't like extremism or radicalism or alarmism, no matter where or who it comes from, children included. I especially dislike tribalism and cultish doomsday prophesying, all of which are characteristic of today's climate activist movement. So I'm going to do what I do best and call them out or at least start to. I think this actually might be two videos worth, so if you'd like me to further drag the bad behavior of climate change alarmists, let me know in the comments because trust me, I am more than happy to do so. One of the most glaring issues with this group of ideologues is their do as I say, not as I do attitude, especially among the wealthy ones. Which is a lot of them actually. Radical climate change activists can often afford the consequences of radical climate change action. See, they tend to be from the progressive class who, according to a 2018 study of America's political landscape called Hidden Tribes, are the most likely political tribe to be earning a salary of a hundred thousand US dollars or more per year. As such, they can afford the higher power prices that come with renewable energy. They can afford to have their income slashed in half by taxes and not really lose any quality of life. And for those young people who are part of the climate alarmist ranks, well, they're often university students who expect to be taken care of by the state anyway. Or in the case of Greta Thunberg and her adolescent-led climate movement, children and teenagers whose parents feed them and pay the bills. None of these activists have any concept of the ramifications of large-scale climate change action. As the Gilets jaunes, or Yellow Vest protesters in France, said of Macron and his cronies when they proposed a fuel tax, 
The elites are thinking about the end of the world, whereas the yellow vests and those they represent are thinking about the end of the month. Nevertheless, the global elites tend to sneer at the little people who point this out to them and continue to preach about doing better, which would be fine if they all did better themselves, but a lot of the time, they don't. Take, for example, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are well known for their opining about climate change, which is why so many eyebrows were raised last month when it emerged that Harry, Meghan and their little baby son had taken four private jets in an 11-day period. Now, private jets emit more tons of carbon dioxide per person than your average commercial flight. Their first trip is estimated to have generated about six times more carbon dioxide per person than a scheduled flight, and their second trip generated an estimated seven times more. And while it was explained away as serving the family's unique security needs, their excuse came crashing down when, days later, Prince William, Kate Middleton and their little ones took a commercial flight, Logan had to be precise, to Scotland and back. True also of the do-as-I-say-not-as-I-do attitude of the celebrities who attended the fabled Google Summer Camp, an annual celebrity summit held at the Vajira Resort in Sicily to discuss the dangers of climate change. The A-listers only three-day congregation is organized by Google co-founders Larry Page and Sergey Brin, and the guests listed included, as well as Prince Harry, Barack Obama, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Katy Perry, to name a few. However, it seems that, like Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, these global elites have a little bit of trouble practicing what they preach. The Italian press reported that 114 private jets were expected to show up at the resort, which would have projected 100,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Along with the gas-guzzling private jets were a number of gas-guzzling private yachts. So you can see how this stuff leaves a little bit of a bad taste in the mouths of your average Joe or Jolene, right? <laughs> Not very motivating. Then, of course, there was the recent 2020 Democrat steak fry in Polk County, Iowa, in which 17 of the 2020 candidates took part in frying 10,500 steaks. Participants included Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Bito O'Rourke, Andrew Yang, Pete Buttigieg, and Amy Klobuchar. The thing is, this jolly occasion comes after weeks of climate change doomsday prophesying from the Democrats, including from some of the candidates in attendance. Yang stated at CNN's seven-hour climate change town hall that it's good for the environment, it's good for your health if you eat less meat. Harris and Klobuchar have both supported reshaping dietary guidelines to encourage less consumption of red meat, and Harris even suggested putting climate impact labels on food. Bernie Sanders signaled that he supported the idea of a meat tax to lower meat consumption in order to help tackle climate change, while Beto and Buttigieg have both supported a carbon tax to balance emissions from the meat industry. And yet, there they are, with their big smiling faces, frying up 10,500 steaks. Okay then. Another very large problem with climate ideologues is their unashamed abuse of children. I'm guessing most of you are familiar with Greta Thunberg. Just a few months ago, she was a lone teenager sitting outside the front of Swedish parliament buildings every Friday to strike for climate change action. Fast forward, and she is leading what they're calling a global movement of young people and talking to world leaders about her list of climate demands. Only, Greta isn't driven just by a youthful vigor and innocent teenage idealism. She is, very regrettably, driven by a sense of genuine fear and panic that she is more than happy to project onto everyone else. I wanted to panic. I wanted to feel the fear I feel every day. This constant state of terror she lives in is very much in part because of her history of mental and neurological health problems. She has autism and Asperger's, she has a history of depression and anxiety, she has OCD, she had an anxiety-induced eating disorder at the age of 11, and she also had selective mutism. Now, ordinarily, a girl with that kind of mental health rap sheet would be protected from this climate alarmism. She would be counseled out of her fear and worry to ensure she could enjoy some quality of life. Instead, she's being indulged and exploited by adults who should know better as a convenient mascot for climate change activism. Why? Because she's a teenager? 
and a girl and she has Asperger's. This makes it very, very difficult for her opponents to criticize her ideas and actions lest they be accused of attacking a child. As this very sensible person put it, when you can't defend your position, march children onto the front lines and dare your opponents to attack them. However, it isn't just Greta's mental health that has induced the constant state of terror she lives in. It is also because she's only 16 and does not yet have a fully developed adult brain or adult sense of perspective. This is why we don't allow children and teens below 18 to vote. With very few exceptions, they're not fully equipped yet to rationalize information and stimuli they receive as either fact or hyperbole. And given the fact adult climate change alarmists have very deliberately upped their rhetoric over the past year, it is no wonder that more and more children and teens are running spooked by the alarmist nature of what they are being fed. For example, in May this year, The Guardian updated its house style guide in terms of how it reports on climate change. In order to make everything seem a bit more catastrophic, the phrase climate change is to be swapped for climate emergency, climate crisis or climate breakdown. Global warming is now to be known as global heating and the term climate skeptic is to be abolished and everyone who is not an alarmist is to be called a climate denier. Anyway, this rhetoric from The Guardian is mirrored by other media outlets, celebrities, politicians, and even the Pope. Now, if you are an adult hearing this kind of stuff, you have the capacity to kind of sift through it and work out whether the people saying this are trying to push an agenda or get some sort of response. However, a kid, Asperger's or not, is generally unable to do that as efficiently because they don't have the life experience or the healthy cynicism that comes with adulthood. As such, if you tell a kid that the world is going to end in 12 years, or that the planet is going to die and we're all going to be underwater, or the earth is burning, they will genuinely believe those things. They take everything very, very literally, and that kind of language, understandably, terrifies them. This is not just speculation. The Climate Psychology Alliance, or CPA, who are a group of psychologists working with the University of Bath in the UK, have reported an increasing number of children suffering from eco-anxiety. The symptoms mirror chronic anxiety, but are of course caused by the existential terror these children are feeling over the perceived threat of climate change. The group feels so strongly about this that they are campaigning for anxiety caused specifically by fear of the future of the planet to be officially recognized as a psychological phenomenon. And in fact, the symptoms in some children are so profound that the CPA reported these kids needed psychiatric drugs. And all because a bunch of ideologically driven, irresponsible adults can't be bothered to find a child-friendly way of explaining themselves. And look, even if they could be bothered, they wouldn't, because it is far too convenient for them to have these little adolescent foot soldiers towing the line, ready to pick up the extremist mantle when they fully mature. I hate to sound like a cliche here, but all I can say is, Won't somebody please think of the children? Whether climate alarmists intended to terrify children into a state of clinical anxiety to the point where they need psychiatric drugs, I don't know, but I'm guessing the most sociopathic of them view it as sort of a happy accident. And they would be loving the fact that Greta Thunberg has further added to the hysteria by getting up at the UNGA Climate Summit and doing this. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Yet you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? This is nowhere near the extent of the bad behavior of climate change alarmists. We haven't even got to the economic ulterior motive driving the most Machiavellian of them. So stay tuned for my next video. It's going to be wild. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment. And if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me.